Hello again, and let's start with the skull. The skull can be divided into two parts. The neurocranium or brain case, which forms the protective cavity surrounding the brain and brainstem, and the viscerocranium, which is formed by the bones supporting the face. Now, the neurocranium consists of flat bones of the skull and the base of the skull, which include the following eight bones. The sphenoid bone, paired temporal bones, ethmoid bone, paired parietal bones, the occipital bone, and the frontal bone. Now, to remember all of them, just remember step of six, as each letter of this mnemonic will remind you of the first letter of one of these six bones. Now, the visceral cranium, which consists of bones of the face that develop from the pharyngeal arches in embryologic development, including the following 14 bones. The mandible, the vomer, buried lacrimal bones, buried nasal bones, buried palatine bones, buried inferior bronchi bones, buried maxillary bones, and buried zygomatic bones. Now, to remember them, just remember that Virgil cannot make my bed zebra laugh, so now try to remember them with me. V was for vomer, conchi, nasal, maxilla and mandible, palatine, zygomatic, and lacrimal. You see, now it's so much easier and faster to remember all of them in less than a minute, right? Now let's move on to the foramen of the skull. But first, we need to remember some points. The floor of the cranial cavity can be divided into an anterior cranial fossa, a middle cranial fossa, and a posterior cranial fossa, all of which contain foramina and fissures through which blood vessels and cranial nerves are transmitted. Now we also need a quick revision of two cranial nerves. First, the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve, which innervates muscles that enable most movements of the eye and raising of the eyelid. And as the oculomotor nerve enters the orbit, it divides into a superior branch and an inferior branch. Now, the fifth cranial nerve or trigeminal nerve is a nerve responsible for sensation in the face and motor functions such as biting and chewing. It's the largest of the cranial nerves, and its name, trigeminal or thrice twinned, derives from the fact that the nerve has three major branches the ophthalmic nerve the maxillary nerve, and the mandibular nerve. Now, the ophthalmic nerve itself has three branches, which are the nasociliary nerve, lacrimal nerve, and frontal nerve. Till now, that's all I need you to remember about these two cranial nerves to get along with me in the next slides. And now, the middle cranial fossa and its foramina. Middle cranial fossa has four main openings, which are the superior orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, and foramen spinosum. To remember them, you can just remember that the middle cranial fossa has the superior orbital fissure and rows for rotundum, ovale, and spinosum. Now let's start with the first one to see what structures are passing through it. So, structures passing through the superior orbital fissure are lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve, trochlear nerve, the superior division of the oculomotor nerve, the nasociliary nerve, and the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve, and finally, the sixth cranial nerve or the abducens nerve. Now, you can remember them easily if you just remember this mnemonic. Leave frankly to see no insult at all. Now, again, try to remember them with me. Lacrimal, frontal, trochlear, superior division of the oculomotor nerve, nasociliary, the inferior division of oculomotor nerve, and the abducens nerve. So now we've talked about structures passing through the superior orbital fissure. The next foramen in the middle cranial fossa is the foramen rotundum, which transmits the maxillary nerve branch of the trigeminal nerve. Anyway, we'll have a mnemonic about that in cranial nerves lectures in the next section. So let's move on to the third foramen, or foramen ovale which means in Latin an oval window, and structures passing through this foramen are the mandibular nerve or the third division of the trigeminal nerve, the accessory meningeal artery, the lesser petrosal nerve, and an emissary vein. And to remember these structures, you don't need other than the word ovale itself, as first O for otic ganglion, 
which is a small parasympathetic ganglion located immediately below the foramen ovale. V for V3 or the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, A for the accessory meningeal artery, L for lesser betrothal nerve, and finally E for emissary vein. And now the foramen spinosum, which is situated just lateral to the foramen ovale. And the following structures are passing through this foramen, the middle meningeal artery and the middle meningeal vein, the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve or the nervous spinosus, which is a branch of the mandibular nerve that supplies the dura mater and an emissary vein. Now to remember them, just remember the word main as first M for the middle meningeal artery and vein, E for emissary vein and N for nervous spinosus. Now the posterior cranial fossa and its foramina. There are four main openings in the posterior cranial fossa which are the internal acoustic meatus, the jugular foramen, the hypoglossal canal, and the foramen magnum. Now the foramen magnum, which means in Latin a great hole, and as you can see it's the largest foramen in the skull, has the following structures passing through it. First, the spinal cord and spinal meninges, meningeal lymphatic vessels, also the accessory nerve or the 11th cranial nerve, which innervates two muscles in the neck, the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles. Also there are the two vertebral arteries, and the sympathetic plexus of the vertebral arteries, and the spinal branches of the vertebral arteries. So to remember them, just remember that spinal meninges make a special vertical sheath. As first, S for spinal cord, spinal meninges, and meningeal lymphatics, then the accessory nerves, then the sympathetic plexus of vertebral arteries, the vertebral arteries, and the spinal branches of these vertebral arteries. And finally, the orbit, which is the cavity where the eye and its appendages are situated. Now, the maxillary bone, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, along with a small part of the body of the sphenoid bone, form the medial wall of the orbital canal, which is, by the way, the thinnest wall of the orbit. So, to remember these bones, just remember this amazing mnemonic. My little eye sits in the orbit. So, maxilla, lacrimal, ethmoid, and a part of the sphenoid bone. Now, I hope previous mnemonics were helpful for you, and skull anatomy is much easier to remember by now. For any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the discussion forum, and see you in the next lecture.